Greetings brothers, in this week's highly anticipated YouTube video we're going to be taking three Ball Predators and putting them up against six Plasma Inceptors to see just who will reign supreme on the battlefield. We're going to have some in-depth analysis so stay tuned to the end because this is a video you're certainly not going to want to miss. Swords of Omen is a very interesting season and things that weren't competitive are now possibly competitive. That's what we want to find out today. I have been fielding two Ball Predators and I'm thinking maybe it's a stupid idea but maybe I should get a third. So let's check out this video and see if um, the Ball Predators are anywhere close to Plasma Inceptors. And we know what Plasma Inceptors do um, but we're going to cover all that in the video so let's move on. So the Ball Predator, what do you get now? It's 110 points. Um, so three of them are going to rock in at like 330 points. I'm thinking the way to run them is the Twin Assault Cannon. So that's Heavy 12, 6, minus 1, 1. Uh, two Heavy Bolters. Uh, that's Heavy 3 or Heavy 6, I guess, if you've got two of them. Strength 5, minus 1, 2. And then you also get a Storm Bolter, I guess. Fine, 12 inches, it would be double shots. 24 inches, it's two shots. And then you get free Hunter Killer Missile. So one, one, like, shoot and pray that maybe it hits, maybe it wounds. And even if it does, it's probably not going to do that much damage. So for the more rest of this video, I haven't included the Hunter Killer Missile. You can... They're too unreliable to... Uh, even if you had three Ball Predators, three Hunter Killer Missiles, realistically probably going to end up doing, like, maximum, probably, like, four or five damage. So we'll ignore all that. We'll cover, like, what it can do every turn. Um, I suppose the other thing to know, I didn't really know this myself, Ball Predators do actually move 12 inches. They are quite fast. If you need to advance them, they're going to go for the full 18. And they have smoke screen. So, uh... Tough to 7, 11 wounds. Plasma Inceptors, right? And Plasma Inceptors have been... When they were at 40 points a model, everyone was going crazy for them. Unfortunately, the GW put them back to 60 very, very, very quickly. Um, I still think they're too expensive, me personally, at 60. And I don't like overcharging Plasma weapons on models that kill themselves. I don't mind if the model takes a mortal wound. But um, if the model kills themselves in a roll of one, I don't like that. Anyway... You can take a score of six, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Six, all with double plasma eradicators. So that's 18 inches, assault D3, um, and either strength seven or eight, and both minus three, and then one or two damage. Now, you're probably going to have these guys arriving in turn two, because you probably want deep strike. So when they do arrive, they're going to be in tactical doctrine. Um, I always think it's best to rush through to Assault Doctrine as quick as possible with Blood Angels. So for the calculations that I've done in this video, I've ignored any sort of doctrines. But it is worth noting that you will have an extra AP on turn 2 in the Inceptors, and you will have an extra AP on turn 1 in the Devastator Doctrine on the Ball Predators. So, unfortunately, Plasma Inceptors don't quite match. You know, it's 360 points for 6, and the Ball Predators are 30 points cheaper. So I've worked out that the Ball Predator is 92% the cost of the six Plasmas. And then let's look at some basic weapons. We've got some minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four weapons here. If we're shooting a Ball Predator with bolt rifles, for example, this is how many wound rolls you're going to need to be able to kill it. So for example, bolt rifles will only wound a Ball Predator on fives. So this 66 would be 22, 22 would go through to the wound roll, and then it would be at minus one, so you'd save on a four plus. So basically 22, save on a four plus, that would be the 11 wounds, right? So we don't include hit rolls. So like, I guess if you were on a three up ballistic skill, you need a, like a hundred bolt rifles, right? Because a three up is 66% chance. But this is how this mass is calculated. So this is wounds required to kill, not hits, because everyone's got different ballistic skills. So I kind of factor that out. So we're just looking at if you're hit, how many times you're going to have to... How many wound rolls do you need to kill a Ball Predator or Plasmas? So this is one Ball Predator against three Plasmas. Now, obviously, um, the Ball Predator has the bigger toughness. Plasmas, uh, you know, they've got decent toughness. Uh, and they're not too far behind in wounds. But against minus one, against minus two, minus three, and even minus four, the Ball Predator is better in all these situations. Uh, in these situations, it's like, what, 20% better or something like that? Um... But in this situation, against the strength 6, against strength 6 being the tipping point where like it's 5s to wound the ball predator and it's 3s to wound the plasmas, they're a lot better against strength 6 weaponry. So preds are slightly more survivable, uh, but they obviously can't fly. Uh, they have no real melee to speak of, whereas the plasma receptors do have a decent amount of melee, especially with blood angels going into assault doctrine and um, basically getting plus 2 to charging. Uh, and But they can guarantee that 18 inch move on the advance. So that's kind of the trade-off here, uh, and obviously damage wouldn't overflow on Inceptor's web deaths, I guess, and what I mean by that is, um, can I hide myself? Yeah, Inceptor death. If you got hit with a multi-melter, like a multi-melter that does 8 damage, 
well that's 8 damage into the Val Predator, whereas if a multi melter does 8 damage to a squad of Inceptors, you just lose 1 Inceptor, so because there's like an artificial breakpoint in when models die, um, it probably actually means realistically these units have similar survivability, right? The Val Predator is going to probably be better against like 1 damage attacks, uh, but if there's, if there's ever any da weapons that do more than like 2 damage essentially, because 2 damage would mean overflow damage would be lost against Plasma Inceptors, because you would need to do two sets of two damage to kill a single model with three wounds, then it's probably much and such. So the only, it's, it's worth noting, like I said, the pla the balls are a little bit cheaper here, so maybe the balls have a slight edge on survivability, but I feel like there's nothing in there. So it depends on what you want, right? You want fly and some melee, then the plasmas are better. If you want maybe a slightly bit more survivability and an 18 inch guaranteed advance, then maybe the ball predators. But there's not much to pick between the two here. If you are going to get some value out of today's video, remember guys, please like and consider subscribing. And if you are already subscribed, remember if you don't click the bell and set your notifications to the all, then YouTube just decides which notifications to show you and sometimes you miss my weekly videos. So please do that if you want to keep up to date all things Blood Angels. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the raw damage output. So what I've done is I've just worked out like the raw damage that the three different units of Val Predators and the six Plasma Inceptors would do if they just shot at the following targets. So we've got like Cadian shot troops, we've got regular marines, we've got Gravis marines, we've got Blight Lord terminators, we've got Dread Knights, we've got small knights, and then we've got big knights. And I've put their armor and toughness down here just so you get a rough ballpark. So for the ball predator, we just really need to look at this column. So this is all the other shit added together, excluding hunter killer missiles. Like I said, you only get to fire them once, we're not including them. Um, if we overcharge a plasma and we get maximum number of shots, because remember those plasmas are swingy, they can max shots. If we overcharge our plasmas, but we get the normal number of shots, so that would be basically averaging. Um, so for every plasma inceptor, you would get four shots. Remember, plasmas can also swing low. Um, my experience with plasmas is they always swing badly. So, I mean, may maybe that's another reason I don't like plasmas, but they do swing both ways, right? So you can sort of see how much more damage they go if they swing high, but remember it would also be the inverse against this if they swing low. And then we've got plasmas on this last column. I've made myself a little bit smaller here so you can see the numbers. Um, and that's the plasmas if you don't overcharge them. Because sometimes you might not want the risk of overcharging. Sometimes you don't have reroll ones. Um, and if you don't have reroll the ones, the chances of you killing models, if each model swings high and gets six shots, like, there's no way to really fire them unless you've got the reroll ones, right? Because if you've got six dice to roll, your average is going to be one, one, it's going to be one, one, in that, you know, the average if you roll six dice is surely one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six. So every time you shoot six shots, you kill your own guy. So it's impossible almost to shoot the plasmas in overcharge if you don't have reroll ones. So this is just if you're not overcharging them. So this is just the base number that they've done, right? But I think. Possibly the most interesting thing here would be to work out how much damage they do per 100 points, right? Because we know that the Ball Predators were a little bit cheaper, and 92% exactly, so what if I just divide all these down? So I divide this column by like 330 and times it by 100, and divide these two columns by 360 and times it by 100. So we just know how much damage they actually do per 100 points you spend on them, and that's what we've got here. And Cool, I'm not too small now. I'll go back to being big so you can see me properly. Um, so if you just average how much ball predators do against these different things, and let's start with the non-overcharged plasmas. Let's compare the ball predator against the non-overcharged plasmas. So against non-overcharged plasmas, the ball predators kill nine Cadian shot troops. The overcharged plasmas kill 5.5. Against marines, the ball predators kill five. The non-overcharged kill 3.7. Against gravis, Again, the Ball Predators are ahead. Against Bite Long Terminators, the Ball Predators are ahead. Against Dread Knights, the Plasmas sneak ahead, I guess because of their additional strength. Against Knights, Ball Predators are ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing... Yeah, I mean, I guess it just that, 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 that'll be right. And then against Big Knights, again, the Ball Predators again ahead because I guess those overcharged Plasmas are only going to be wounding on fives. So if you're not going to overcharge your Plasmas then actually Ball Predators are good, right? Uh, it seems a bit strange to say Ball Predators are good and that they've been terrible for a long time, but I mean, they dropped a lot of points. You used to have to pay like 20 points per Stormbolter 
uh, sorry, Heavy Bolter. I think you had to pay 15 points for each of the Sponsons. I think you had to pay 10 points for the Salt Cannon. I think you had to pay for the Storm Bolter, maybe 5 points. And I think you had to pay 5 for the Hunter Killer Missile. We haven't even included the Hunter Killer Missile here, right? Um, so with all those changes, and I guess Plasma and Scepter is getting no change in terms of their points, the Ball Predator against non-overcharged is good. What about against overcharged with average shots? We're going to kill more Shot Troopers. A little bit behind on... Um, Marines, a little bit behind on Gravis Marines. We're ahead against any minus one damage enemies. I mean, we're not that much ahead. I guess, like, if three Ball Predators all shot at um, Blight Lord Terminators, you're going to get, like, what, 6.9? You're maybe going to kill, like, two and a half Blight Lord Terminators. It's going to be nothing exciting, considering that's 330 points of shooting. Uh, against Dread Knights, we're behind. Against uh, Armagers, we're behind. And against Big Knights, we're behind. So there's definitely value in those overcharged plasmas. We know that. People run them. People swear by them. But, like I said, I think you need reroll ones. And then, I guess the point is that those plasmas will swing high and low. I despise swingy weapons in tournament play. Because I think when you're playing in a tournament, you want to know, hey, I've got 10 shots. I can go in my head, right? I've hit on three, so that's about six hits. I wound on three, so that's about four wounds. They have to take saves or whatever. And you can do a quick calculation in your head. When it's a swingy weapon, and I think, if you think about this, basically, um, if you had six plasmas, you're rolling 12 dice. So there's definitely a there's definitely a way that could swing. That could swing all the way up to, like, 36 shots, but it could swing as low as 12 shots. Now, that's quite a big swing. Um, that's 24 between max and min. But, I guess if you swing high, then, I guess, the overcharged plasmas, being that they were basically... They are better against, basically, almost every target except maybe minus one damage targets. Um, arguably, I guess you should know that you're firing two damage weapons at minus one damage targets, and you should probably avoid doing that. Um, or you, I, I mean, I guess against Blight Lord Terminators, for example, there would be actually no disadvantage to just shooting on low power, right? Because your Strength 7 is still going to get the wound rolls on the same threes, um, etc, etc. So, but I think my point here, or maybe from looking at this is because I was thinking like am I mad I'm playing ball predators am I a mentalist right now uh, do I need to stop doing this are they terrible and I just don't know it I think on paper they actually look okay and if you're running them with something janky which I am at the moment which is Gilliman in that I can reroll all my ones I actually get to buff all this damage a bit as well um, so I would say that like running ball predators with Gilliman they're going to be pretty much the equivalent of... Because um, Gilliman's going to give me 11% more chance to hit, right? Because it's hitting on threes. So normally hit on threes, 66. Uh, Rerolling uh, ones. Puts that up to 77. So 11% more chance to hit potentially means 11% more damage. Um, yeah, so Ball Predators. Damage per 100 points is actually comparable. It's not It's not bad. It's... it's it's a little bit low below the overcharge, but you don't need to necessarily run around the captain or nonsense to to um, reroll ones. It's also three ball predators in different places of the map can possibly be a bit more survivable than just six plasma and scepters in a single squad. That if they ever if the enemy ever managed to tie those plasma and scepters in combat, that's a problem, right? Because um, I'm pretty sure plasma and scepters can't fall back and shoot. I think your only strat there would be upon wings of fire to get them out of combat. Um, which, you, which you would probably do, right? Because I'm not even sure Plasma Scepters have bolt pistols. Do they have a bolt pistol? Um, no, they they don't have any pistols. All right, so in, if, if they're ever stuck in combat, they're not getting to shoot their weapons, uh, and that could be problematic. Obviously, Ball Predator can shoot into combat, but... Uh, I guess the point of the video is, is the Ball Predator bad compared to Plasma Scepters? I would say it's not. I mean, it's comparable. It's it's generally comparable. Um, plasmas are going to be better, I guess, if you have reroll ones and you swing high. If if you don't, then there's there's not a whole lot in it. There really is not a lot, whole lot in it. And if, like me, you hate plasmas and you're too scared to ever fire them on on high power, which is generally how I end up playing my plasmas on models that that don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that don't just take a mortal, then I guess ball predators are the, are the unit for me. So if you've got some old ball predators and you don't like plasmas, 
then maybe this is the time to bring them out. What strats do they have? Um, so the plasmas obviously can use Descent of the Angels when they arrive to get plus one to hit. So that will be about 20% damage increase on the turn they arrive, uh, which is generally pretty good. It also lets them like ignore charge modifiers, which um, is fine, but based on the fact that like if you're stuck in combat, you're not going to get to shoot your guns. I almost think you don't want to be charging with the plasma scepters. Uh, you could run like um, Hammer of Wrath, which I didn't put on the slide, obviously, and I'm just remembering now. But I think it's... Uh, I think you're better... If you're running Plasma and Scepters, you probably don't want them in combat. You can Transhuman the Plasma and Scepters. They're already Toughness 5, so Transhuman has probably only ever going to shift the dice roll by 1. But, I mean, it'll shift it by 1. Might make them a bit more survivable. There is a Gravis Strat as well I haven't put up here, where you can get plus 1 to your armor save against 1 damage weapons. Um, again, that could be okay. And upon wings of fire is a good way. Maybe you can get them out of get them out of a shit situation like they've been charged and redeploy them and then shoot again. Uh, the ball predator is smokescreen, um, which again I guess you would use it on a single ball predator as opposed to like transhuman for one CP here is gonna. Well, I guess if you got all six, it's gonna cost two CP for transhuman. Uh, the reason I did six against three was because they seemed similar in points. And we could just basically compare and work out the 100 point difference. Um, I guess you could run 5 Plasma Inceptors. 5 Plasma Inceptors against 3 Ball Predators. Either way, it, it, it's very similar. Um, so what are my thoughts on this, right? So the Ball Predator has um, a lack of break points. So it's more vulnerable against high single shot damage weapons. We know that. Uh, it could be realistically reserved now in Arcs of Omen, which potentially makes up for one of its weaknesses, having to deploy the tank on the table with no invulnerable save usually means it can just get shot by the enemy, well now you can bring it in and you can at least shoot first before the enemy gets to it, but by doing that you get you miss out on the turn where it's most effective in turn one, which is Devastator Doctrine. Um, I know some Blood Angels players are going crazy and trying to stay in Devastator Doctrine for Codex Warfare, that's not going to be me, I don't like that strategy. Um, it's comparable slash better than the low power Plasma Inceptors, and it's got superior range as well, right? The heavy bolters are 36, the salt cannon is 24. I guess you've got that 48-inch hunter killer missile. I mean, I should have I should have written here how the hunter killer missile. Whatever value you think that is, my experience is you would probably shoot all three hunter killer missiles, two of them hit, one of them wounds, the enemy save, fails the save, and then you roll a d6 damage and it's a one. So you did one damage from three hunter killer missiles. I don't know why hunter killer missiles aren't d3 plus three. Uh, Space Marines are still struggling without any D3 plus 3, or lack of D3 plus 3, right? Plasma Scepters. They got potential to do more damage. Let me make myself smaller again, hold on. Uh, they got more damage, but they can swing high and low due to the number of shots. They kind of require re-rolls. Um, and even then, 36 shots with re-rolls is still a 3% chance to kill your own model. So even if you have the re-roll ones next to them, and you shoot the whole squad, there's a 3% chance you will kill your own model. Uh, which maybe on paper doesn't sound that high, but um, I always manage to kill my own ship with like, you know, it's that, it's that whole time when like, you know when you've got a psychic test and you roll a double one and you go, oh, I'll CP that psychic test and then you re-roll the double one, right? Killing 3%, you know, there's a decent chance to, to lose your own model. And I was watching a stream by Tabletop Tactics just a few weeks ago and the guy definitely killed one of his own plasma sectors with one, re-roll one. So it happens. Um, they're great in Tactical Doctrine, which is likely the time they will arrive, because that is either Strength 7 or Strength 8 at minus 4. Uh, and they are probably the more competitive option, but they are not as cool as Ball Predators. And I think that's important to note, because coolness is important in Warhammer 40,000. So, a little bit of a different video this week. Um, tell me what you think about Ball Predators. Does this video make you feel like you should feel them, or are you still thinking no? Um, maybe there's some other options, but like for the longest time I've been trying to figure out like some fire support that works well with Blood Angels. And I think they could actually be Ball Predators, and I'm very tempted to run them to the next tournament I go to. Um, Leave me a comment down below on if you found a better fire support unit or what is working for you in the Arcs of Omen series, season, series, season. Um, are you running Inceptors at the moment? Is there any thought about, does this make you think, well, maybe I'll run one squad of Inceptors, one Ball Predator, or no, you're just like, Ball Predators are stupid. Um, they've been, they've been rubbish for a long time. Um, I've had fun running them. I think that's the main thing. 
in this season, I am trying to have fun because everything seems a little bit wacky. Uh, the free war gear definitely seems a bit wacky. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next time, brothers, happy gaming. May the Emperor watch over you, and by the blood are we made strong. Peace.